everybody made it in the cold weather. Um, so the announcements, uh, tomorrow is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Um, you can do that in your own way. Um, Tuesday, oh no, February 6th is Ladies' Night Out. The details are coming. And we're gonna have um, the Sunday School today. And then Thursday morning is the Bible study from 10 to 11.30. And I want to thank everyone who has donated and helped in the pantry. We had two inspectors from the food bank, from Akron Canton Food Bank came out last week, and I think we did okay, so thank you. And today is Ellen's birthday. Prepare for worship. Good morning. We'll begin today with confession and forgiveness. This is found on the front of your bulletin. Please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, creator of the word and giver of the word of truth, God who is wind sweeping over the waters. Amen. Amen. Called, Called together this morning by the Holy Spirit and gathered in this place, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant. Renew your creation. Restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The, the voice, voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God speaks. The time of grace is right now. And in Christ Jesus, the reign of God draws near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved.
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Thanks be to you this morning, Lord Jesus Christ. You are our most merciful Redeemer. We give you thanks for the countless blessings and benefits that you give each of us. We ask this morning, gracious God, that we would know you more clearly, that you would help us to love you more dearly, and that called by you, we would follow you more nearly, day by day, praising you, together with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's reading is from 1 Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The, Lo the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in the room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel, and said, he said, here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel, Samuel, got up and went to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you had called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and he calls you. You shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, <coughs> Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew.
because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expediated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning, then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, here I am. What was it that the Lord, he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything, and he hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. So this week I was trying to think of the date of the story I'm about to tell you, uh, but I couldn't think of it, so the date isn't important, I guess. Uh, but uh, my family and I once shut down an entire mall, and I was trying to remember when this happened, but I couldn't remember it. Uh, Ryan was very little, and we were visiting in town. So if you've ever been to Belden Village Mall, Kate's parents live not far from there, we were shopping at Belden Village Mall, and we shut the whole thing down. Uh, because while we were shopping there, we were inside the store, and Kate and I were probably in some heated debate over like which shade of blue the shirt we needed needed to be or whatever. And so we were talking about that and lost Ryan, uh, who was like two or three at the time. And uh, I started to panic, and Kate started to panic. Have uh, you ever lost somebody? I'm telling this story because every one of us have been here, right? 
uh, so I'm telling mine, but you all can think of every single. So uh, first it was look around the store where we did not find Ryan. Uh, so then it was like station people at the doors and they started to call the mall security who began to shut down the entire mall so people could not leave the mall because we could not find Ryan. And so we're inside this store and uh, I would like to say that I held it together better than Kate, but I don't know if I did. It was a lot of panic and it was a lot of disaster and it was like probably two minutes, but it felt like two hours because you've done this, you've been here before, right? You've done this. Uh, until I don't, it, eventually one of the other people shopping in the store with us came up to us and said, I think he's in the belts. And I don't know what took her so long. Like she could have told us way before the mall got shut all the way down, that would have been helpful. Uh, I don't know, eventually she was just like, I guess I'll tell you. And he was inside the belt display, like in the back of it with all the belts draped in front of him like a veil. And when we like pulled him apart, he was just like, ah, oh, this is the greatest thing ever, right? Yeah, so you've been here, right? You ha if you've been lost, you've lost your kid, and I am saying it like it's not just me, so I feel better about myself, I guess, too. It's not just me who's lost my children. We've all been through this. Uh, a few years later, we went to uh, Disney World with Kate's family, and this time it wasn't my kids, but it was one of our family members. We lost them in Disney World, and that's a whole nother thing. Uh, it was not one of my kids this time, so, but we've all been here, right? You know what it feels like to lose your kids like this, uh, or you know what it feels like to be the lost one, right? You have it? This is a day to begin by thinking about our lostness. Each and every one of us has lost somebody, but each and every one of us is lost in something. We're lost in grief. We're lost in grudges that we hold. We're lost in the whole world that's divided. We're lost in all sorts of things. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is who calls us to gather together in worship. I don't think it's just our idea. I think God whispers in our ear, uh, this, would, this would be a place for you. And that we are called by the Holy Spirit and we come together and we come here lost in our stuff. But today's gospel gets us somewhere else with that. It talks to us about being found. Now to understand the whole part about being found, you kind of have to enter into the idea of being lost first. You have to be willing to admit you've lost your kids, you yourself have gotten lost, you're lost in something. In order to understand what it feels like to be found, you have to start with thinking about the whole thing of being lost. The word found is in this gospel uh, three or four times, and it's this whole chain reaction of people finding other people. And the top of that chain is God finding people, finding people for who they are. This is a story about being found. And so I've been thinking about how we're lost, about how easy it is to be lost in uh, diagnosis or in uh, fear, all the things we could think of, right? And I've been thinking about how to talk to you about being found. And so uh, for the next little bit, I just want you to think about how we've all been lost or that we're all lost in something and that what God offers and why we're called here is to be found. So I'm trying to think about how to talk to you about how to be found. And uh, I actually took this from the first reading and the gospel itself. It talks to us about how this finding works. So this is all I'll talk to you about the rest of the time is how God finds us. We know that we're lost, or our hope is that God finds us, and this is how I'll think about it. Uh, we'll think about it, I'll ask it like this. And this can be rhetorical, you don't have to answer. Uh, what's your favorite part? Once you're finally called to this place, what's the most meaningful thing that we do when we're gathered for worship? It's meaningful uh, to be gathered and see people that you wanna connect with, I think that's part of it, right? Uh, music, bells, singing, that's an important part of this. Scripture is an important part of it. Uh, hopefully we're thinking of the meal that we gather around. God's presence in Eucharist is important. 
Did any of you have church announcements as the most important part of why you're here? Did anybody have that? Like, thank goodness for the announcements. I believe that we all are lost in our own thing. And that's sort of what lostness is, is that it's sort of individual. We all have our own maybe thing that gets us to be the lost one. And that this is a story about being found. And the way that it talks about being found in today's scripture is that God finds us through giving us a calling, and through giving us a purpose, through giving us things that we do. And these are the things, the means of God's grace, the ways that God finds us. And so I just want to sort of talk to you about calling and our calling together. And what better way to do that than with everybody's favorite part of worship services, lots of announcements. So everything else is just housekeeping announcements. Uh, do you have a thing you do when you get bored to keep yourself like engaged? Do you have like uh, something you do to wake yourself up? You're gonna have that handy because the rest of this is just announcements basically, all right? So I have a handful of announcements because all of these things are things that we do together, that things that we're called, and I believe these are places where God finds us in the midst of our lostness. And I've been talking to various people throughout the last few weeks, and there's all sorts of things that uh, I just need to make sure people know about. So it's a bunch of announcements. Uh, the first one is about this thing. I think every single bulletin has one of these this time. Uh, in getting ready for this part, I, Jane Hecht had to do all the work this week. She had to print all these and stuff all the bulletins. She had to do all of this. So these should be in every bulletin. Uh, and I discovered a few weeks ago uh, that, that I haven't done a good job lately of telling you what these are and why we have them. Uh, this is Taking Faith Home. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit of the story of how this came to us. Uh, like, f and I told you it was just announcements, so whatever you do to keep yourself awake, this is time to do that. Uh, uh, like, like five years ago, a member of St. Stephen came to me. Her uh, dad was a pastor, a Lutheran pastor, and he had passed away. And one of the things that she experienced being in a pastor's family was that she felt like he didn't always take a lot of time to do self-care or learn or do something. He was busy and he didn't do enough. So she said, as part of my dad's sort of, in honor of my dad, I would like you to do something for your own self-care, whatever you want. And I was, wow, whatever I want, that's pretty broad. I can think of a lot of stuff. And uh, through this whole process, I ended up in Minneapolis for about a week, uh, three or four or five, about a week or so. And while I was there, I took a little short class at Luther Seminary, which is an ELCA seminary, which is in Minneapolis. And the person who writes these every week was who gave the class. And these are called Taking Faith Home. And the idea of this is that uh, it's fine to be called together and gather together in worship, but who we are and who God is and how God finds us isn't just a sun, it's a Sunday morning thing, God finds us in communion, but God finds us uh, in our homes or in our own lives too. And in particular, the person who writes these uh, has, uh, talks a lot about how important it is uh, for families and for people, uh, in, even if you're by yourself, but families, to sort of take time to sit with the gospel, with the scripture. And so the idea of these, the name is taking faith home, right? so that you take this home. And you might look at this, one side has all the scripture for the whole week from the lectionary. It has next week's gospel in here. It has every day a different, uh, and you might look at that and be like, that's a lot. You wouldn't have to do it every day to be okay. Maybe you just use it for yourself. It has prayers. If you feel like praying's difficult, it has prayers to get you jump started. It has meal prayers. Uh, it has little rituals you can do in your, in your family, service things you can do together, or devotions, all sorts of things. And what you do with this is sort of up to you. But I believe we live in this whole world of sort of lostness. And we know, I mean, we know these songs like, uh, I was lost, but now I'm found. We know God finds us. But then we don't always like attach it or connect it or say how. And the way God finds us is by little calls that just sit in front of us. And one of them is this taking faith home, right? 
So these are for you, you can use them however you want, and this is the way God finds us in the midst of all of our lostness. And I said that this was a lot of announcements, so do you have that thing that keeps you awake when like, people are making announcements? Think of it now, whatever it is you do to keep awake, I have a few more of these. Um, uh, this past week uh, at, uh, uh, I don't know, on Thursday, uh, I saw a group of people uh, gather together to plan out what I think is the whole year uh, for the joy group. Uh, and some people have asked me to be, or, or don't remember or whatever, what joy group is, what that means. That's just, it's an acronym, just older youth. So we have a youth group for just older people, uh, which includes me, I go to it. Uh, this is the 30th year of the Joy Group. It was established in 1994, and this is 2024. So this is the 30th year of it, and they have a whole year of things. And uh, I would look forward to those and look in the announcements, because you all love announcements, for those activities that are coming up. Uh, the next one is uh, Jane also had to do all the work for this. This is She had to do all this adding and arithmetic so I could make this announcement. Um, uh, this talks to, I think, who you all are and what it means to be called together. If we're lost, if we live in a world of lostness, God finds us, and it's important to think through not just the idea that God finds us, but specific ways that God calls us and that we're found together. And uh, some of you will remember that you've, I think these were, were these mailed too? These were mailed and have been given out for a long time, and Jane had to do all the math of how many of these generosity cards our sort of corporate people of St. Stephen giving together. And I've had some people even call me and say, uh, how'd that go? Uh, so Jane, you know, got on the calculator. Uh, we got 42 of these back, which I, we didn't do this at all last year, so 42 is a really big increase from zero. Uh, so we're doing great, and uh, the amounts pledged for this year, whether it's weekly giving or monthly giving or yearly giving, uh, is, and this is Jane's math, so, you know, who it, yeah, if it's, that means it's more accurate than mine. Uh, it's $145,484, and this is who we are together we are people who are called into our generosity who gather together and who believe that a building that sits in our community uh, ministries that we do in our church are important and that we together take what God has given us and we put that together and we live out a call in the world that we live in and this is uh, part of the way that that call looks right uh, that was three announcements. People love announcements, right? How, I could do this all day. We can, how many more do you want? Do you want a lot more announcements? One more is one, one more. That's it. Then I'll be done. One more. Um, uh, Judy already mentioned this, so she sort of made this announcement halfway. But every year, our pantry, your church pantry, is inspected by the food bank. Uh, it's a yearly thing. And they come and they uh, look through what we do and they sort of, uh, I guess, review it. Um, we had our annual uh, food pantry uh, inspection by the food bank this past week. And uh, I didn't write this stuff down. Jane, I should have, I should have been like, where are you so I can remember all this. Uh, a f handful of things that I noticed when they were here or that I heard them talk about. Uh, first of all, Judy said this, that two people came from the food bank. Uh, one of them is the actual inspector. The other one is a person that the inspector said, I, he, I would like for you to come with me because I would like for you to see what a pantry looks like when they're doing it right. Which is a great start to an inspection, by the way, right? Like, that sounds good. I really liked that. While they were in there, they, uh, they said that in 2022, and this is where I'm gonna get the numbers wrong, that we ordered only a couple thousand, like two, 3,000 pounds of food from the food bank. Uh, in 2023, we ordered just over 15,000 pounds of food from the food bank. 
So the order that came from the food bank is not the totality of all the stuff that we hand out. You bring donations, we get donations from other places, but we gave out at least 15,000 pounds of food last year. Uh, and the pantry has expanded and has b pretty busy. Uh, and that's your call together in the community that we live in. Uh, we paid the food bank last year for those just over 15,000 pounds of food, $5,600. Uh, so we get that stuff at a, you know, you go to the food bank because you get it in a different rate than if you go to the grocery store. Uh, for, uh, for, as of now, I don't know the actual amount in the account, but we currently have enough money in the account that you all keep to pay for a whole nother year at the 15,000. We have more than $5,600 in the account now. So I'm giving that announcement to tell you that our pantry is expanding at such a rate that the food bank itself brings brought people here to say, what's happening? What are they doing? Why are we getting such positive reports about this place? And that's your food pantry. And not only did it exist in 2023, but it's funded well enough by all of you that it's going to exist this whole year too without any problems. And I mention that because the stories we always hear and the thing that weighs on us is being lost in something. And it's okay to have grief or to have a grudge, well that's not okay, but to have sort of something that makes us a little fearful or to have something that occupies our mind that we feel lost in at times. But that's not the story of who God is and what God promises us. Lostness is our story but the gospel today tells us that being found is God's story for us. And it's really easy in church to say, I was lost, but now I'm found, we're supposed to know that. But I wanted to make sure that you hear that there are very specific ways that God calls us as God's people in the midst of all the lostness, claims us as God's own, calls us, and it's through these things that God finds us. God finds us through worship, service, fellowship, generosity. God finds us in the things we do together to read God's word, and the things we do together to be community, and the things we do to serve in the world around us. God finds us in our call to generosity and it's really easy for all the lost stuff to weigh on our mind, but I just wanted to make an announcement that God has found you all, the people of St. Stephen, in so many ways, and that it's okay to focus on those sometimes too. Amen.
and I are gathered together this morning by the Holy Spirit, and by this Holy Spirit, we're gathered together with all of the saints in every time and in every place, and it is together with them that we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. Encourage the ministry and mission of the church, God of truth. God of grace, delight in the goodness of your creation. God of fig trees and fertile soil, heal areas of the world harmed by human greed. Restore those recovering from natural disaster. God of grace, Call the leaders of every neighborhood and nation to serve faithfully, God of wisdom. Give them visions of justice and unity. God of grace, hold in your care any who suffer and struggle, God of compassion. You who know our inner hearts, be present with any who are oppressed, victims of racism or cultural bias, and all who long for respite or restoration, especially William Christ, Katie, Tommy, Shelley, Nancy Moser, Jack Pam, Robin, Ted and Jackie Jormel, John and Tacey Romaley, Judy and Ivers, Dawn, and all those we hold in our hearts. God of grace, give this congregation the anticipation and excitement of Samuel, so inspired and empowered to do your work in the world. God of unity. God of grace. Trusting God who raised Jesus and will also raise us in spirit and truth. We remember all who have died and are at peace among the saints, especially the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., whose faithful advocacy for peace and justice continues to embolden the church, God of grace. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior. Jesus Christ, amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share the peace.
be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcomes death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opens to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Gathered into one, we are bold to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
we stand. Let us pray. Gracious God, giver of all that we have and of every gift, we ask that you would find us in the midst of all the things that weigh upon us. We thank you for being present in this place and finding us in Christ's body that is our food. And we thank you for calling us to be Christ's body together. We ask, gracious God, that through your calling you would raise us to life by your power and that you would do this for the benefit of all and to your glory both now and forever. Amen. bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.